everybody video here for you today now i made dozens of videos on places in this area of the world some going back 13,000 years some going back 8,000 years some going back 5,000 years but when you're thorough it's a little easier to put the pieces of history together how things transpired and this kind of goes along with the video i made not too long ago i talked about teshub the storm god the serpent and the dragon i've been asked about that so why don't we attach that to an actual place here where there was a temple to Teshub? Also, many layers of history. We are going down to Tel Bari in Syria today, and it's right down here. The history here goes back five, six thousand years, depending on what story you read. But this is a very large tell. This is over 1,100 feet from here to here, and about 335 meters. So that is a good size good size ancient mound and then kind of up on top we have a top layer here that seems to be nothing but ancient ruins here is a look at this massive tell from a distance here is a look a little closer up a lot of the ancient ruins that they examined are up on top here i'm not sure if they got all the way down but history going back at least five little over five thousand years it says the archaeological sequence which has been brought to light stretches from the start of the third millennium bc up until the 14th century a.d from the sumerian akkadian paleo babylonian assyrian evidence through to the hellenistic parthian and sassanid byzantine and finally medieval occupation this place is just a treasure trove for archaeologists people living here for over 5,000 years. There's a few reasons why I'm making this video. One, it goes along with a lot of other videos I have made. Two, because there's really no video on YouTube about this site. I think it's a pretty fascinating site, a lot of, a lot of history here. The ancient name for this city was Kahat, and here is an area where they opened up a little section for archeological work, and you notice a person right in there That'll give you some idea of scale. And also a temple was found in here, a storm god that I mentioned, maybe about three or four videos ago, but that'll give you a look at an opened up area here at Telbury. Here is another look at this ancient site, but people say people started living here over 6,000 years ago. And then there's just layer upon layer of history here, culture upon culture. The Assyrians got here about 3,800 years ago, then about 3,500 years ago. This became a city in the Haranian kingdom of Mitanni. Places that you always hear about, but it's nice looking at places where they actually lived. And just like many other places around the world, they just built on top of older ruins here. Now I will leave a link to the Tel Bari or Tel Bari project here on Facebook. This is about four years old. It says, Heritage belongs to humanity. Take good care of it. Help us preserve it. But here is a sign at the site. Let's just go through some of these photos here. Here are some artifacts found at the site. This comes from the Middle Assyrian period, probably around the same time as the New Kingdom of Egypt. Here's another artifact found at the site. Here is a look, I believe, from the top of the mound. A small structure they have up on top of there. Here are some ruins found in here. This is from Area G. I'm not sure what time period this goes back to, but these ruins are still in pretty good shape here. Here is what they call a Hellenistic oil lamp found in the excavation. Here is what they call a Nutsi beaker. I'm not sure what time period that comes from, but a design on it there. Here is what they call a rosette decorated threshold coming from the Neo-Assyrian period. That is pretty intricate. Here they are doing work at the site here. Here is a look at the mound. More artifacts. This comes from a period around 2500 BC, this artifact. Here is more look at the ruins. But I will leave this link below if you want to look. This comes from the 12th or 13th century of the current era. Look at the people doing the work here. Here is one good paper I found written on this site. I will leave the link below. It has a lot of good information. It has one topographical map here. You can see how evenly this place has just rose up over time. 
It has diagrams of the stonework and stuff they found in here, different layers. Found this paper very interesting. And here, let me just blow this up. In the Assyrian sediment level, they found some burials. With those burials, they found these cylinder seals. Looks like horses and other maybe celestial scenes being played out. But those are pretty intricate. Pretty cool find here made in this mound. One of the more interesting finds in this mound was a temple to the god Teshub. He was the weather, sky, and storm god of the Haranians and also the Hittites, but I just don't read too much about the Hittites being here. But Teshub, the storm god of the Haranians, well, he is associated with the dragon and the serpent. Here is depiction of the god Teshub slain, the chaos dragon. He is the sky god, the storm god, slain the chaos dragon. And the dragon and the serpent are pretty much intertwined in ancient myth. I will leave this link below if you want to read it, Teshub and the dragon, but some people have argued that the Hittite myth of the storm god and the dragon stands behind the story of Jason, Medea, and the Golden Fleece from Jason and the Argonauts. The two primary myths of the storm god and the serpent was discovered only in the 1930s with the standard English translation published only in 1982. There is no public domain translation of the myth. Below I have paraphrased the sparse inscriptions to indicate the content and provide a summary of the myth. So if you want to read this, but it talks about the storm god slays the serpent. Here in the second myth starts with the heavily damaged invocation of rain. So you can just read this and do your own interpretation of what that might mean. I don't use Wikipedia that often, but it has some information here that is just repeated on other websites. This site is over 91 acres, a very large site. It says the earliest layers discovered at Telbury come from the Halaf period. Bari was in the Fertile Crescent and could benefit from winter rains as well as river water. It says the site at Telbury was inhabited since the 4th millennium BC. By the middle of the 3rd millennium BC, Bari came under Akkadian cultural influence. And here is a large stella. This comes from about 2,800 years ago. And this mentions uh, the stella here, governor of Assur, by the name of Shar Petit Belly. And was there something depicted on the front of this stella at one time that is worn away? Well, maybe. But it says here, the temple to the storm god Teshub in Kahat is specifically mentioned in the Shadiwaza Treaty of the 14th century BC. So this storm god temple must have been a pretty important uh, attribute of this ancient mound. Here's a look at that stella coming from about 2,800 years ago. And was there a human form depicted on the front of that at one time? Well, maybe, but that comes from about 2,800 years ago, but there's many different layers, a human occupation here. And the earliest traces may be coming from about 6,000 years ago. Pretty interesting place, that is for sure. A site that does not have a video on YouTube about it, so I thought I'd do one today. But Ancient Ruins, a place that is pretty cool here. Ancient Temples to the Storm Gods. This place seems to have it all. That is a video on Tel Barai, Ancient Kahat in Syria today. Layer upon layer of history. Stuff that goes back maybe 6,000 years. Many different cultures. Hope you thought that was cool. And you all have a very nice day.